Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to use Kling, one of the most powerful free video generators available right now. Whether you're a content creator, a filmmaker, or just curious about AI, this step-by-step -step guide will have you producing stunning videos in no time. Let's start by getting you set up with Kling. Open your web browser and navigate to the Kling website. If you don't have an account yet, you'll need to create one. Don't worry, it's a quick and simple process. Once you're logged in, you'll be presented with the main dashboard. Now, I know it might look a bit overwhelming at first with all the options and settings, but I promise you by the end of this tutorial, you'll have it all figured out. The first thing we need to do is make sure we're using the latest version of Kling. This is crucial because version 1.5 comes packed with some incredible new features that we'll be exploring today. To find this, click on the AI videos and look for a drop down menu in the top left corner of your screen. Click on it and select version 1.5. This simple step ensures you have access to all the latest and greatest features Kling has to offer. Now let's talk about what makes version 1.5 so special. One of the most significant improvements is the ability to create videos in full HD quality. This means your videos will be in clear 1080p resolution. That will make them look professional and polished. But it's not just about the visual quality. Version 1.5 has also gotten much smarter at understanding and interpreting your instructions. This means when you describe what you want in your video, the AI is much more likely to deliver exactly what you're looking for. Now that we understand what version 1.5 brings to the table, let's start creating our first video. Kling gives us two main methods to generate videos. We can either describe what we want using text or we can start with an existing image and bring it to life. For this tutorial, we'll start with the text to video method. Look for a box on your screen where you can type in your ideas. This is called the prompt box. Think of something interesting you'd like to see in a video. For our example, let's use the prompt, a man eating spaghetti while sitting on a bench in a busy street. Below the prompt box, you'll notice some additional settings. This is where you can fine tune your video generation. Feel free to set it to generate two or three versions. This way, you'll have a variety of options to choose from. Once you're happy with your settings, it's time to hit the generate button. It might take a few minutes. After it's done, take a good look at what Kling has created for you. If you use the same prompt as me, you should see a man actually sitting on a bench eating spaghetti with a busy street in the background. Pay attention to the details. Notice how the people and cars in the background are moving smoothly, almost as if they were real. This level of detail on realism is a significant improvement from the older version, which might have missed key elements or made the background look unrealistic. Now that we've successfully created a video from text, let's try the image to video feature. This is where things get really exciting because you can take any still image and bring it to life. Look for an upload image button on your screen. Click it and choose a picture from your computer. For this example, let's say we've chosen a photo of a woman holding a camera. After you upload the image, you'll see another prompt box appear. This is where you tell Kling what you want the woman in the photo to do. Let's type a woman capturing a photo and hit generate. Again, give it a few minutes to generate the video. When your video is ready, play it and watch closely. You should see the woman actually taking a photo, not just standing still holding the camera. This demonstrates how good version 1.5 is at understanding and following your instructions. It's not just animating the image, it's interpreting your prompt and creating a logical action based on it. Kling 1.5 really shines when it comes to creating realistic looking people. Try entering a prompt like a young woman with an expressive face in a cinematic movie scene and see what happens. You'll be amazed at how the woman's face shows a range of emotions, almost like a real actress performing in front of you. If you're into more action-packed scenes, Kling can handle those too. Try a prompt like a guy wearing shorts in the gym doing a bench press. Watch closely how the man's muscles move as he lifts the weight. While it might not be perfect, you might notice his arms look a bit too big. It's incredibly impressive for an AI generated video. Now that you've got the hang of the basics, don't be afraid to get creative with your prompts. Here, I tried making a cat driving a car 
through a busy city street, an emperor angelfish swimming in a rocky underwater habitat, and a volcano erupting inside a coffee cup. The more you experiment, the more you'll discover what Kling is capable of. It's important to remember though, that while Kling is incredibly advanced, it's not perfect. Sometimes it might misunderstand your instructions or add unexpected details to your video. When you've created a video you're happy with, look for a download button to save it to your computer. From there, you can use it however you like. The key to mastering Kling is consistent practice and experimentation. Remember, Kling is a tool that's constantly evolving. Keep an eye out for new features and updates. Who knows, the next version might bring even more exciting possibilities to your video creation process. Now let's get into some advanced techniques to get even better results. We'll start with creating reference images using Midjourney. First, open your web browser and go to the Midjourney website. Once there, look for the sign up button in the top right corner of the homepage. Click on it and you'll be directed to join the Midjourney Discord server if you haven't already. In the Discord server, navigate to one of the hashtag newbies channels listed on the left sidebar. This is where you'll find the image creation interface. You'll see a prompt bar at the bottom of the chat window. When crafting your prompt, it's crucial to describe your desired image in detail. Include the style, mood, and any specific elements you want to see. That is because the more specific and detailed your prompt, the better mid-journey can understand and execute your vision. If you simply say a landscape, you might get anything from a desert to a lush forest. But if you say a misty Scottish Highlands landscape at dawn with rugged mountains, a serene loch, and ancient standing stones in the foreground, you're giving the AI a clear picture to work from. Remember, the goal here is to create reference images that will serve as the foundation for your AI generated videos. If you're going for a cinematic look, try 16 to 9. Or if you're creating content for social media, a 1 to 1 ratio might be more suitable. You can also adjust the image quality using the double minus Q parameter. Higher values like double minus Q2 can add extra texture to your images. Now when you're ready to use your image in Kling, there are a few settings you'll want to pay attention to. First, there's the creativity slider. This tool lets you control how much freedom the AI has in interpreting your prompt. Slide it to the right if you want the AI to get creative, or to the left if you want it to stick closely to your instructions. You'll also need to choose between standard and professional generation modes. While standard is quicker, I often find that professional mode provides better results, especially when it comes to preserving the details in your reference image. It might take a bit longer, but the quality boost is usually worth the wait. When it comes to video length, I generally recommend sticking with five second clips. In my experience, these tend to maintain better consistency than 10 second ones. The longer the video, the more chances there are for the AI to introduce inconsistencies or distortions. One more important thing is crafting effective prompts. This is where you can really guide the AI to create exactly what you're thinking of. One trick I've learned is to include keywords that suggest subtle or slow movements. This can help minimize unwanted motion and shape distortions. For example, instead of just saying a misty mountain, try something like a rugged peak shrouded in swirling mist, its jagged silhouette barely visible against the gray Scottish sky. Being specific about actions and describing the mood or atmosphere can also help guide the AI's interpretation. The more detail you provide, the better the AI can understand and execute your vision.